When dealing with infertility, it's been well established that up to 50% of infertility cases involve some uh, role of poor sperm health and how that poor sperm health is affecting the chances of conceiving. And when we're referring to poor sperm health, there are various sperm parameters laid out by the World Health Organization um, and through research that we see have an impact on reproductive capacity. The common uh, sperm parameters that we often look at with basic sperm testing include sperm concentration, sperm motility, sperm progressive motility, so how many of those sperm cells are actually so showing forward movement, and a very important one called sperm morphology, which looks at the phenotype of the sperm cell. So let's, it's looking at it under a microscope and looking at how many of these sperm cells look like normal, healthy sperm cells or do they have a very large head? Do they have two tails, etc.? So in a new recently published uh, observational study, they followed over 22,000 assisted reproductive technologies. And what they found was the impact of these sperm parameters, they were able to actually predict the likelihood of success for these assisted reproductive technologies, including in vitro fertilization or IVF, and intracytoplasmic sperm injection, or commonly called ICSI. So we're seeing how the sperm parameters not only affect chances of conception, but we're seeing how just looking at them beforehand may actually serve as a predictor of whether a couple is likely to succeed with a treatment like IVF or ICSI or not. And what we're seeing is patients specifically um, when we're looking at the, the sperm parameter called motility. So how many of these sperm cells seem to sh exhibit proper movement? We're seeing that if sperm motility is low, the chances of success with IVF start to drop. And this is because we need healthy sperm motility to help fertilize the follicles. So if we're getting an X number of follicles with IVF and the motility is low, we see that the fertilization rate drops. So the number of those follicles that actually go on to become embryos is lower than what we would expect compared to a patient that had healthy and good sperm motility. Similarly for ICSI, we often overcome this barrier of low sperm motility because the sperm cell is injected directly into the egg. So we get fertilization, it uh, guarantees fertilization. What we see is if the sperm morphology, so what we were referring to earlier as low um, normal sperm morphology, so a low number of sperm cells looking like healthy normal sperm cells actually predicts whether ICSI is going to be successful or not. So patients that have low sperm morphology are actually at risk of a much lower chance of succeeding with a treatment like ICSI. Now you'll note uh, since the beginning of this conversation or video, we haven't even talked about egg health. We're just looking at sperm health when it comes to these, these predictions. So when we're looking at the predictive value of sperm health, we have to start understanding that even if we have fertilized embryos, even if we have um, good sperm concentration, some of these parameters may negatively um, contribute or may increase the likelihood of, of uh, failing with IVF or ICSI. And what I often find with fertility treatments, when patients come to uh, our office or we're doing a consultation, is they're often given their parameters and they're told there's an issue with sperm motility or there's an issue with sperm concentration. You know, it should ideally be better, but you know what, it's okay. People can still get pregnant and that's about it. So a lot of patients are left feeling uninformed and feel like they have a lack of actionable information. So they don't know what the next steps necessarily are. What can they do about the low sperm concentration? What can they do about low sperm motility or low normal sperm morphology? What does it even mean? And so patients are often looking for answers and they often show up at our office um, to help uh, obtain those answers and what they can be doing from an evidence-based perspective to help improve their chances of conceiving by improving the sperm parameters. Because a lot of patients understand that if the sperm levels are low, if the sperm concentration is low, if the motility is low, even like IVF or ICSI aside, we know that's going to negatively impact their chances of conceiving naturally. So not only does the sperm health have an important 
um, impact on the chances of success potentially with IVF and ICSI, but also with natural cycles. So for me, it makes sense in the preconception period that we really need to focus on sperm health as well. And a lot of patients tell me that they really aren't given any instructions. They're told that the sperm health is unfortunately low or it's borderline or it's suboptimal, but there's really no indication or instructions given on what to do next or what they can do about it and whether they should even be retesting down the road um, to see if these numbers have improved with certain lifestyle changes, et cetera. What I want to chat with you specifically today is a new review that was published that looked at uh, the data of over 20 clinical trials that specifically evaluated for the role of medicinal herbs in the treatment of sperm factor infertility. And to me, this is very important because of all the 20 studies they looked at, all of them reported an incredibly high safety profile. Many of them reported zero side effects. So we're looking at a, a potential treatment option that if it does succeed in improving sperm parameters may have an immeasurable and incredible effect on chances of success, of success naturally and potentially with assisted reproductive technologies. And we're seeing that the risk of harm from these therapies is incredibly low. So when it comes to these therapies, how does that work? How does a herb even work to you know, improve sperm parameters and support the chances of fertility? Surely if you're doing an assisted reproductive technology that's worth you know $20,000 plus uh, here in Canada, then you know, how does a simple herb improve your chances of, or, of succeeding? Or how does a simple herb potentially improve the fertility of your partner um, or, or your sperm health? And this is what we're seeing with the, these, these uh, new studies. We're looking at an increasing important role of medicinal herbs. In fact, the World Health Organization um, encouraged the use of medicinal herbs for, for treatment and encouraged researchers, researchers to continue investigating, investigating how uh, medicinal herbs uh, can impact certain health um, parameters and how they might be used as new medicines and, and uh, research for future medicines. And so we're seeing that medicinal herbs in general can possess three specific qualities that seem to impact or support sperm health. Number one is we see that a lot of these medicinal compounds that are used in this uh, review contain what we call polyphenolic compounds and flavonoids. And flavonoids and polyphenolic compounds are very strong antioxidants or can exert antioxidant activity. And this is very important because sperm cells are incredibly vulnerable to a specific type of chemical stress known as oxidative stress, or uh, which is caused by reactive oxygen species. So antioxidants in the form of these polyphenolic compounds and flavonoids we see can reduce the negative impact um, that reactive oxygen species have on sperm health and may support sperm function. We also see that these uh, medicinal herbs may actually reduce the chances of spur, uh, sorry, stress-induced infertility. So we see that they contain certain amino acids like tryptophan, um, and they contain certain steroids, which can actually support um, the, the nervous system. And they bind to serotonin and GABA receptors in the nervous system and may help to reduce stress. And that can induce certain hormonal changes, which is part of the third um, property that certain medicinal herbs have, they can actually have a hormonal modulatory effect, meaning they can uh, cause hormones to shift in a certain direction. So we see with a lot of these studies that some of these medicinal herbs are able to actually increase the production of testosterone, may balance the production of certain hormones like follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone, which are produced from the pituitary gland and regulate sperm production and testosterone production. The herbs can also affect something called gonadotropin releasing hormone secretion from the hypothalamus, which is kind of the top of the ladder. So the gonadotropin releasing hormone affects the, the pituitary gland, which uh, secretes LH and FSH, which tells the testes to produce sperm and produce testosterone. And we also see how these medicinal compounds can affect the levels of prolactin, prolactin, which helps or would uh, uh, have an inhibitory effect on fertility or reduce sperm health and reduce sperm production. So we see that these uh, herbs can have one, two, three, or varying combinations of effects there. And what's most important is that we see a controversy around the safety of these herbs because of the concentration of their active components or ingredients. So it's very important to work with a licensed healthcare provider, a, a naturopathic doctor, 
to help have proper medical supervision when prescribing these therapies and being able to further evaluate for other factors as well. So the medicinal herbs in themselves pre uh, present a potential avenue for supporting sperm health and fertility, but we also look at it in combination with a variety of other important factors.